Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living runic boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button. As we climb even higher, the 1500 ladder, it felt really good going to locals today. It was only three rounds, um, but I have more of a tournament report than that to just report because we did make some changes to this deck after we scrubbed out at our other locals on uh, Thursday. And so I, I wanted to bring this because. Really, we should have gone X1 today at Locals, but we ended up getting two draws just because I misplayed. Um, but I also wanted to get some feedback on this list because of the fact I do have a regional coming up this Saturday. So if y'all are going to be in Kissimmee, Orlando, be sure to come up and say hi. Uh, would love to trade because I'm still trying to get one more QCR Exodia head and a QCR Blue Eyes and also a play set of transaction rollbacks. I need two more to complete my set from the uh, tins that we bought three cases of. Shameless plug, that's also on the channel. Um, but this is a Runic White Forest deck list that I've been messing around with. And honestly, if you want to play a deck that will piss you off as much as your opponent when it doesn't work, play this garbage. Because even though I'm taking this to the regional, it's a deck that requires so much technical play and so much perfection that you could literally knock yourself out of getting your regional invite just because you make one bad misplay. Um, for those of y'all, I doubt that there's anyone around from back in the day during this time, but years ago, if you want to go watch this video again, shameless plug on the channel, but years ago, I played a deck called Garden Beat. It was also known as Chain Beat, where you played things like Black Garden, Wind Up Rabbit, Evil Swarm Thunderbird, where you would tag out these monsters, and when they came back, they had their full attack strength, so it was like fighting, you know, big boss monsters that the opponent just couldn't handle, even though they weren't all that big. But the main thing that I said in that deck profile years ago, and I'll never forget it, is that I said that this deck requires major technical play. Like, you really need to know what you're doing. And this deck reminds me a lot of that because one misplay, you will lose. I'm not bullshitting you. You misplay once, you are probably losing the ballgame. So with that out of the way, I still at least wanted to show this off because when you understand how the deck functions, when you take the time to learn it, you really do get rewarded for it. Also, the sleeves are going to probably seem slippery because I literally just changed them out uh, about five minutes ago. So hopefully they don't slip too much out of my hands. But starting off, we're playing three copies of Izet. If I can move this down a little bit. Uh, Izet is your essentially Stratos of the deck. Um, you don't need to play a Stellar, to be quite honest, because we're also on three copies of Sylvie, and then we're on three copies of Roselia. Now, if you look at a lot of other builds, a lot of people are cutting this down to two. I've even seen some builds where they only play one Roselia. But for me personally, since there's a lot of different ways that you can play this deck, I personally have opted for three of each with no Estellar, and I really feel that that works best for me. Um, obviously, you're going to end up with some brick-ass hands where you know you just open up multiple bodies, and the only thing you can really pray for is that you can just activate a Runic spell to pitch one of these if you have an extra get it into the graveyard, but then at least with it in the grave, you can bounce it, you know, one of your white four synchros in order to get it out. Um, I really like three of each. Um, the, the thing is with this deck that there's a lot of personal preference that comes into making this kind of deck. I realize that now. Um, just trying to copy a build online isn't necessarily going to show success to you. You know, you have to kind of edit things for how you see fit. Like, for example, I saw a build it topped a regional uh, just a couple weeks ago, if that. And it, the guy wasn't playing Chaos Angel, and I think that that's totally incorrect. You need Chaos Angel. He was main decking Scarlight, Red Dragon, Archfiend, and I, I just don't think that you need that. So <clears throat> for me, at least, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice today. Playing three of each is uh, really good, uh, at least for me. Uh, moving on to the spells. We're playing uh, two copies of Fountain. Um, it's, it's Fountain. I, I don't think that really requires much explanation boys and girls uh, we're playing three of just the big meaty tip three flashing fire please don't demonetize me youtube uh three copies of destruction and then i'm trying not to spill my deck all over the place that's why i'm picking up copies at a, or a little bit at a time uh three copies of curse uh, three copies of slender or slender uh one copy of uh three copies of slumber one copy of droplets one dispelling and then we're playing one copy of the smiting storm so i really like this lineup um droplets doubles up as a way to try and mill the opponent out quick more than anything it's going to come up as a way that you can just summon out a free body <clears throat> um you know get out of hugan and then pitch a card and then you know move on with your day um i don't like double dispelling because with my terrible luck in this game as i always talk about uh i'm gonna see two copies in my hand and i'm gonna be pretty pissed um, and then Smiting Storm is just Smiting Storm. It's just another name. It's not the worst thing in the world to open up Double Dispelling, but 
I really don't feel like it's it's that needed. So that is it for all of your uh, runic spells. It's really standard. Uh, there's not much else to it. All right, maybe we can pick up the rest of the pile here. Um, for the rest, we are playing One Tails. So I actually really like this card. Uh, I know that that's not going to be a popular opinion. I've seen some... I've actually seen a lot of different builds playing either one, two, or three copies of Woes of the White Forest, and we are playing that. But having another card to search off of either Roselia or Sylvie, if you already have Woes, just offers you more um, diversity in what cards you have access to, right? So, you know, if you already have Woes, you can go Tails, play a Runic spell, pitch the Tails, you can set it. Especially when you get into the grind game, a lot of times I've been noticing with this build, if you have both Woes and Tails set... I won't even activate the tails. I'll just use it for like Diabelle to send this to get out of body and just reset the tails. So I constantly have something every turn that I can either send with Roselia to draw, send with Izette to draw, or if I really need it in a pinch, I can use it to search. So I, I actually really like tails in this list. Uh, and then we're on the one chicken game, the one terraforming. Um, this is actually really good. The fact that they can't respond to the draw is crazy. Um, obviously, if you're going near time, this is a garbage card. Um, but, I mean, it's it's just really good. The Terraforming also doubles up as a card that you can ditch if you really need to. Uh, one Call by the Grave and one Talents. This has become pretty standard in most builds. Um, I've realized now there is a couple hands that I've tested where, like, I've opened up Talents and Call by. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen from time to time. Where if you have a Runic spell, you kind of have to pitch, say, like, Talents and keep the Call by just so that you're not wasting another Runic spell if you need it if, you know, they imperm you or something. Um, but these two cards, I think, are really good, um, especially just with, you know, how many hand traps we're seeing in uh, the current format pre-Rage of the Abyss. Uh, for the traps, we're playing three evenly matched. I opened up this against uh, my Ritual Beast opponent, where our first game took 45 minutes, and it was a draw, and it should have been a win, because he had the Ritual Beast continuous spell that lowers the monster's attack points. So when I attack with Silvera to do double piercing, I had Runic Destruction in hand. So all I had to do is attack and do his weakest defense monster, because I had flipped everything face down the turn before. Then on my attack declaration, I could just activate Destruction, pop his continuous spell, and he would have taken 4,000 damage. Because my monster would have gone back up to 24, and his monster only had 400 defense. So I would have won, and I was down by 3,200 life points, because I took a little bit of damage the turn before. And I had played a chicken game and a skill dream that game. So yeah, I, I should have won that. I should have been 201. Uh, it is what it is. This card's busted. Uh, you have to play it. You need something to be able to go second. Um, it's it's just needed. And then finally, we're on two copies of Woes and one Skill Drain. So I'm sure that this is going to look really weird because if you're on Triple Azette, you're probably only on one Woes and maybe you're side decking, you know, one to two more. Um, but I feel that this ratio of all things works really well for me. Uh, you're seeing woes a decent amount of the time. You have another one that you can search in your deck. It really helps with your grind game. Um, and then skill drain, of course, being skill drain is just absolutely crazy. Um, I've seen some builds where they'll play two woes and side deck a third. I'm not side decking a third. I really don't like side decking a third. Um, I feel that two is fine. You know, if you get hit with Droll or Shifter, it is what it is. You know, I have dog shit luck in this game. I talk about it all the time. If anyone's going to get hit with that stuff, it's going to be me. Playing a third Woes in my side deck is not going to help me play through those cards when you're going you're going to lose no matter what if those cards hit you and you don't have this established on the field. Like, it's the nature of this deck. And unfortunately, that's honestly what makes this deck kind of garbage. Especially, like, if they get you down to one card in hand. Like, that's how you beat any Runic variant is that you just get them to one card and then they're just crapping all over the venue floor. Um, for the extra deck. We're playing three copies of Hugin. Um, most of your combos involve you, uh, well, your opening hand, uh, depending on how you open. You'll go through two Hugins, so three is absolutely necessary. Uh, Double Gary. I actually used this once at Locals today to summon it, crash into, uh, into a, it was a fucking runic ice barrier deck. And I had Dark Ruler, his Floodgate monster that banishes all spells and traps that you play. So I went battle phase, activated runic spell, played Gary. Uh, and then crash into it. I took 21 and I popped his monster and I cleared his board. Um, yeah, that was that was really delicious. So I think Double Gary's fine. Uh, it's also really good for Chaos Angel plays. Uh, and then one Diabelle, one Roselia, and then one of the Silvera. You only need one of each. It's it's standard. It's fine. Also, I didn't realize that until today. I totally forgotten. I'm so used to only summoning from Extra Deck of Grave. Diabelle also summons a Tuner Synchro from Banish. That's, uh, that's something to keep in mind. One Triage, one Coral Dragon. Again, this is uh, 
<clears throat> this is pretty standard. It's uh, pretty adorable. Uh, Zapper Shrimp never came up, but the card's good. Uh, Chaos Angel. <laughs> I literally sat on this card the entire game one against the Ritual Beast player. He could not out this. It just had its fat ass in, the, in defense of 2,800. He kept lowering its attack with the continuous spell. I'm like, I don't know what your shit does, but sitting on a light and dark Chaos Angel is good. This is really good, this format, honestly, especially if the opponent doesn't hit you with an Imperm or a Droplet, or even if they do, if you have like a Slumber in hand to protect this from being destroyed, it's it's really good. Um, and then one Chang Ying. Uh, card's honestly really good. Um, in testing, it's been performing better than like at Locals, but just being able to sit on this in defense and banish a bunch of cards is really good. In testing, I got this up to 5,000 attack, and uh, I beat a, a White Forest uh, Centurion Toy Box player uh, because I was able to punch through his uh, Blazar. I've used like Freezing Curse and I just punched for 5k. It was really gross. Uh, and then one Baguska, one Little Knight. I'm not on Exiton. I'm not on Sky Crisis. Even if I pulled a Sky Crisis out of my one of three cases of tins, I don't think I'd play it. Baguska is just really good. Little Knight's, of course, really crazy. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about the side deck. Um, I want to talk about this card first um, because this is actually something I took out that I had tested. Uh, and it did come up in locals today against the Ubel matchup, which is what you side deck this for. This card's fucking awful. Um, I was talking to someone on the Facebook page, and he was talking about how Magical Spring is really good. I guess, pimp. And, like, no offense to the guy. Like, if it works for you, it works for you. Feel free to try this. Um, but essentially what it does is that it's a quick play spell. So, like, you can set it and forget it and whatever. But you can activate it. You draw cards equal to the number of face-up cards that the opponent controls. Then you discard cards equal to the number of face-up spells and traps you control. So, best case scenario, this is your only face-up card, assuming you don't have Fountain. So, you'll draw, like, three or four from the Ubel player because they might have you know, Nightmare Pain, Nightmare Throne, maybe they activate the Unchained Trap, and then there you go, you're drawing three or four. Maybe they also have Spirit Gate, so there's your fourth card. And then you're only pitching one because you got this face up. But until the end of the opponent's next turn, the activation of their spells and traps can't be negated, and their spells and traps can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. So, like, I tried to destruction his Eternal Favor because he didn't have Fiendsmith cards, and then I forgot that the shit won't pop. So I I, I really didn't like this card. It's it's not all that good. Instead, we're uh, playing Bite Steals. Um, three copies of Mulcharmy. Uh, this actually came up against the uh, Runic Ice Barrier player. I activated double Mulcharmy, so when he Tribute Summoned over his Hugin uh, to Normal Summon the level 5 whatever Ice Barrier Floodgate thing, I drew two, and then I drew for turn. This this card's really good, and it only gets better once we get Foie Ross. Like, I'm really excited for that card. Three copies of Spooky Dogwood. Uh, I'm not on Munin. I'm not on Scarlight. I don't know how to feel about it. Uh, it didn't come up, but I feel like at the regional, it's definitely going to come up. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I should be playing Munin. This is kind of something I'm, I'm really back and forth on. Um, but I'm also back and forth on it because instead of the Magical Springs, I'm playing three Vice Steals because this is really good into Fiendsmith and Ubel. I don't know if I should cut, say, like a Bal Baldrig for like a Munin so that I have another, like, fourth way to win in time. I can just activate a Runic Spell, play Munin, and then quickly pass turn and gain 1,000. But I, I don't know. Um, the Bice Steel seem like they're a much better option. Um, but, yeah. So, that's that's really all I have to say about it. Um, three copies of this broke-ass card. If you want to just FTK you, Bell, just play this. Um, and also, apparently, fucking Runic ice barrier too because yeah that's a thing apparently but this um neither player can special summon monsters from the deck nor can they add cards from deck to hand except by drawing you don't really care um it turns off woes if you don't have a body in hand to special summon um but if you have a runic spell to drop out a body then you don't really care um but it, it just depends on your board state um, but ideally, it's not really shutting off your board. And of course, you can still draw on the Runic Fountain because it doesn't stop you from drawing. Every time I've played this on Ubel, i won. This card's absolutely insane. This is staying. Um, especially, too, if you can end with like a Hugin on fields. Like if you go against Tenpai and they try and Lightning Storm or Feather Dust for you, you just banish the Hugin and save these. And then, once it dies, you just use Diabell to get it right back and they're always under deck lockdown. Like it's, it's so good. Um, and then, last but not least, we're playing three copies of Dark Ruler card's really good there's not much else to really say about it it's dark ruler for some reason my runic ice barrier opponent had to read dark ruler i don't know why but uh we ended up winning that match so it didn't really bother me too much um so anyway that's the side deck like i said i i did play magical spring today um so i i can't speak to how effective uh the bice steals are but i feel that overall um 
think I think that the deck performed well. It just I need to personally get better at playing under time management constraints um, and just knowing when to scoop and knowing that you know there, there's always another game. Um, but against the Ritual Beast guy, I would have beaten him anyway had I just grinded out that full 45 minutes. So, <clears throat> guys, that's my list. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments. Is there anything that you would change about it? Anything that we could do to make it better? Uh, I don't really think the Azamina cards make this deck any better, actually. And even once the Azamina cards come out, I'm going to go and play fucking Snake Eyes because I'm tired of playing Rogue stuff. I'm ready to be a Tier 1 player again. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.